Muin Khan, who was the famous Muin Khan. He was a famous Pakistani cricketer, the wicketkeeper of Pakistan. Okay. So my name is Moin Khan. I have done my schooling from DPS Srinagar. I am uh, basically from Banihal, Raman district. And I have done my engineering, uh, civil engineering from Islamic University of Science and Technology, Aantipura, JNK. Uh, I had uh, the opportunity to have some, to lead some leadership roles in my life. Like I have been the head boy of DPS Srinagar. I have been the uh, Mr. DPS contest I have won. And I have been, I had the opportunity to be the class representative of my batch for four long years. And my hobbies include so, traveling and uh, playing gully cricket and discussion with my friends and family. Why shouldn't Moeen Khan be building roads and buildings rather than becoming a civil servant? Sir, uh, I have done my civil engineering, but it was my passion from the very childhood days that I wanted to join. Uh, police services specifically because my father was also in police department he has served as a senior superintendent of police so it was my passion and also I think that I can use my civil engineering knowledge in the best possible manner when I get into the administrative services you have preference for police service yes sir where can you use those engineering skills in police so I think first the point one is that I can use my civil engineering uh, background in the traffic police itself, like the traffic management, I can use it there because my uh, my uh, this project in the eighth semester during the college days it was also uh, related to traffic engineering, so of the Srinagar city itself. So I can use that in that manner. So point number two is that as being a civil engineer, you're very good in drawing maps and uh, noting down the survey thing. So in the police we have crime investigation and you have to note down the different parameters of the crime site so i think civil engineering would definitely help me very much in that thing drug abuse is a serious issue these days yes sir tomorrow you become a police officer how would you help in eradicating this menace from the area where it will be posted so drug abuse uh, so the reasons for drug abuse here in jnk uh, is first of all we have a porous boundary border eastern neighbor as well as western neighbors of ours and point number two is that uh, there is very high unemployment rate this around uh, rest of india we have 17 percent unemployment rate and in jnk we have 30 percent unemployment rate and we have the best demographic dividend right now it's most of our young youth they are uh, most of our youth are in the age group of 25 to 36 years so uh, what I can do now is that what you asked me the question that what I can do for it. So first of all, there's this, uh, you have to lead the awareness com campaigns in your area. We can, uh, we can have the leadership role in this, that you can be a motivating factor for the young youth. If I would join the services, I would definitely try to be that motivating factor for the young youth to go towards some services, go towards government jobs, private sector. And, do something good for the society as a whole. And sir, uh, there, uh, if uh, I would be joining Kashmir Police Services, KPS, so I would uh, definitely, definitely try to break that relation between the, uh, that uh, sort of relation the drug peddlers have with the uh, department at the lower level as, and at the higher level itself. I would definitely try to work on that thing. Can you name some important personalities of Banihal area? Yes, sir. Sir, uh, there was the governor of Assam back then, Mr. D.D. Thakur, sir. He was from Banihal. From and which, from which place? Sir, uh, the, uh, he was from Ukkadhal. Yes, sir. And uh, there was uh, D.D. Thakur's son, uh, Mr. T.S. Thakur, the Chief Justice of India. He was uh, the 99th Constitutional Amendment Act of 2015. He is recognized for that thing specifically. And sir, we have Professor Margu Banihali. Another Thakur is in there. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. D. S. Thakur. D. S. Thakur. Why is he? D. S. Thakur. D. S. Thakur. Sir, uh, he is also the son of uh, Justice uh, T. S. Thakur. D. Uh, D. Thakur. Sorry. Sir, uh, I am not. Why is he? I am not sorry, sir. I am not covered. Chief Justice of Andhra Pradesh. Yes, sir. Okay, then you have 
besides Thakur's ruins, then we have Professor Marghub Banihali. Mm. So he has done a lot of work in Kashmiri, uh, like in Kashmiri literature, and so Kashmiri grammar and Urdu also. His son is a famous psychiatrist, huh? Yes, sir. What is his name? Sir, uh, uh, I do know him, but I am not getting that uh, thing right. Mushtaq Yes, sir. 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 Sir, hierarchy is basically a scalar chain. Sir, I can, uh, if you would allow me, I can give you an example of hierarchy. Sir, there is this police department, for example. We have the uh, head constable at the bottom, then we have the constable, then we have the ASI, then we have the SI, then we have the DYSP, we have the SP, we have the D uh, SSP, we have the DIG. This is what hierarchy is. Yes, sir. What is the shape of hierarchy? Sir, it, it's basically, uh, there's an issue, mostly, that it's top down. Top down. And there, that's an issue with the administration, sir. This hierarchy is based on a theory. Yes, sir. Can you tell me who was the father of this hierarchy and what is the name of that theory? Sir, Lathar Galik and Erwik, basically they were two uh, these thinkers, lofty thinkers, they were they, uh, they were the founders of this theory of hierarchy. What was the name of the theory? Sir, I'm sorry sir, I'm not able to remember. This theory, it is not correct. Sir, okay sir. It is a theory of motivation. Okay sir. Okay sir, sorry sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Communication plays an important role in the yes, sir. today's administration. Right? Yes, sir. This is also one of the topics. You have studied communication from here. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Can you tell me the types of communication? So communication can be informal and communication can be formal as well. So there are many thinkers who, uh, for example, there's uh, Chester Bernard, there's Simon. They usually focus on informal sort of communication. So, informal sort of communication is where you have an organization with the, uh, like the societal skills also involved in that. It's not only the formal thing. So, that's how the efficiency of the organization could go on. And so, uh, when there's efficiency, there's effectiveness also. And uh, with efficiency and effectiveness, there comes economy also. See, tell me one thing. In 2019, the Reorganization Act was yes, sir. passed. Right, sir. Under which article of the Constitution of India Parliament? Was I empowered to pass second? Can I take some seconds? Why not? It comes the article of the Constitution of India empowers Parliament to legislate on this issue. Sir, so it was Article 367. And when we change the area of the, uh, when we diminish or we add the area, we cut the area, we also have to use Article 4 of the Constitution, which empowers us to use Article 3 itself of the Constitution. That's how we redraw the lines of Ladakh and JNK. Our state has been uh, changed into a union territory. Yes, sir. We have other union territories in the country. Yes, sir. On the model of which union territory our UT has been formed. Sir, on the lines of Pondicherry, the UT of Pondicherry. We have, we are a union territory with the legislature. Pondicherry, what do you say? Puducherry. Yes. With legislation. Yes, we have a UT with legislation in Delhi also, then what is the difference between our legislation and our UT and Delhi? So basically, the biggest difference between Delhi and JNK is that Delhi is the national capital territory. There's this good case also going on in the Supreme Court, Honorable Court. That, that, that is national capital. What then? There is no difference. That's a UT. That is a legislation. So that is a UT, but that, the that, that, Delhi. That yes, sir. But Delhi has a lot more interference of the central government. In what aspect? In all, these are the subjects which are defined in the Constitution. Central will legislate on all these subjects. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Just to understand, the UT will legislate on these subjects. On which subject? Union of India has more powers in Delhi to legislate as compared to our legislature here or our duty here. Yes, sir. Right, sir. Is that tell me there is a difference in duty of Delhi and duty of JNK and Kodichi. Yes, sir. sir. So, all the three have legislated. Yes, sir. The basic difference you tell me. Can Delhi legislature legislate on land laws? Sir, I don't think so. And I'm can sure. JNK legislate? Yes, sir. This uh, JNK legislature has. We are not like Delhi. 
noted sir right sir when was this dnk you are just get notified and enforced in Thirty first of October two thousand and nineteen, it was enforced, and uh, basically the bill was introduced in the uh, upper house of the parliament, Rajya Sabha, on fifth of uh, August nine uh, two thousand and nineteen, sir. This was a constitutional bill. How much? It required a simple majority or two thirds. Sir, basically, it was a more of an executive order. It required a simple majority because it wasn't. We didn't use Article three hundred and sixty-eight for the bill because if we would see uh, the first provision of Article three seventy, it was that India is an integral uh, JNK. Sorry, sir, JNK is an integral part of India, and we didn't tinker with that. Why is it written India as an integral part? Sir, in Article three seventy. Three seventy. Yes, sir. Can you show me? Sir, there is a provision. Sir, so to my knowledge, I think there is a provision in Article three seventy that uh, because all the provision. Are you referring to constitution? There is. It is. It is. Constitution of Jammu and Kashmir is there. Yes, sir. It was in the constitution of Jammu and Kashmir. Yes. Section three there, where it has been mentioned that India is an integral part of India. Okay. Constitution of JNK, which has been given. Right. That was also debated. That that that. स्टेट Okay, sir. Gopala Swami. Gopala Swami. I get. They were the member of the Constituent Assembly of India as well. Otherwise, Constitution ki mix kar rahe hain. Kisne ki? Sir, it's everybody. Ah, just just one minute. Ah, kisne ki? Sir, B R Ambedkar, sir, the father of Indian Constitution. Father of the. You can't tell me who are the law minister at the time of this. Uh, sir, law minister. Kamal Chowdhury was going that this Constitution was there. Who was the law minister at that time? Sir, I don't exactly remember that. Sir, it was B R M Ambedkar. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. We are confident. It was B R Ambedkar, sir. Drafting committee as well and the law minister. He was he. He was the chairman of this. Yes, sir. Actually, tell me one thing. We are everybody in common parlance says here that Article three seventy has been removed. Article three seventy has been removed. Has it really been removed from the Constitution of India? No, sir. It hasn't been removed. That's what I was telling you. That there are some provisions of the uh, article that are still there. Article three, sir. Yes, sir. Hmm? Still, we can find the article in the Constitution. Like there is Article three seventy in the Indian Constitution. Okay. Well, we will close up. Yes, sir. Well, DCM, the half government. Sir, it's the big construction company. What do they do? Private limited. Sir, they are basically the uh, contractors. They, they take up the projects in PPP mode. So where do you operate from? Sir, what? Where do you operate from in them? Sir, in Banihal. In Banihal. Yeah. In Banihal. Yeah. Kya banana hai wahan pe? Sir, there were uh, there was this tunnel T73 of the USBRL project going on in the valley. Sir, they were working on that. They were lining the tunnel. They had so the they, work of lining they, the tunnel and the. They make these tunnels on the highway. Yes, yes, sir. The contractors for for Afcon, the Afcon. Yes, sir. The contractors for Afcon, right? Sir, which channel are you specifically referring about? So you are you are working with BCC private. Yes, sir. Yes. They are sub contractors of Afcon, right? Yes, sir. They have uh, basically taken it from Afcon. Some of the works they have. What kind of what's your role there? Sir, quality engineer. I was working as a quality engineer back then. Sir, uh, the quality of concrete, and we had this lean tests of concrete that were so tests like how much lean is the concrete. That's this called as basically in engineering term, it's called a slump test. So we did those things, and basically there was some other management roles also, like the attendance of the labor and other things also. That also I saw. How much time was it with you? Sir, I had worked with them from uh, September. You are not working with them right now. No, sir, I am not working with them. March twenty one, the date. Yes, yes, it's up to March twenty two thousand twenty one. Which city are you civil engineering with? Yes, sir. I I. You know what is P E R T? Both, yes, sir. What's that? Sir? sir, it's program evaluation and review technique. What is it? Sir, PERT is basically. Program evaluation. 
pro, sorry, so project evaluation and review technique. So PERT is basically a, uh, so this is a method to, uh, that is used for project planning and management. It's a management and planning technique. This is uh, basically used for construction management. We can, uh, we, uh, so there's a difference between PERT and the other CPM. CPM uses activities, while PERT uses the events as the benchmark. So that is why PERT is being used these days for construction activities mostly. CPM video? So CP, in CPM, we, uh, we look at the activities part. When what, would, what is the end result? In so, a PERT or a CPM chart, what is the end result? What are you looking at? So basically, it's the uh, estimated time of completion of the project and the least expected. That's it. That's it. Don't do it, sir. Exactly, sir. Right, sir. Bird and CPM are tools, project management tools. Exactly, sir. That give you the shortest possible time frame for completion. Exactly, sir. So there are events, there are activities. Yes. PEB, you can buy this one. Sir, what? PEB. PEB? PEB. Sir, I'm not able to remember. Pre engineering building. Okay. Uh, lockdown uh, condition uh, graph is like the tree fabric. Uh, okay. Okay, sir. Portal frame structure, silver one. Portal. Portal frame structures. Portal frame structures, sir. Is it the uh, like we get the decks for the bridges? You ask me. You have this one. Sir, I exactly don't. Uh, Is that the similar thing which you are like? No, sir. It's not like that. Portal frame structures is columns and beams. So I exactly. I'm asking you really. Okay, sir. I tell you, when you were the head boy of uh, DPSC 2014, yes, sir. what are the reforms you did? Sir, I was able to, uh, first of all, I think uh, there was uh, no uh, alumni meet in DPSC Nagar. It was established in 2000, back in 2000, our school. So I was, it was the first uh, batch. Like, Who was the principal? Kusumbar? Yes, sir. Madam Kusumbar. Yes, sir. What are the reforms as a head boy? Sir, as a head boy, I tried. What position? Really, <laughs> so I tried uh, to introduce the alumni meet. Like I was the manager of that first alumni meet of DPST, another point number one. And second, there was this. I uh, during my time, we formed an academic committee, the student uh, academic committee and the student discipline committee. So we introduced uh, on our I cards. We introduced four punches, the four punches. And if a student would be found doing some indiscipline, we would punch it once. And those students who would had who would have four punches, they would be rusticated from the school. So that was... So there was this one guy, he had some drug issues during that time in the school, so he was... Yes, sir. So in IUST, from IUST, from IUST, from IUST? Yes, sir, from Islamic University. IUST, from 2015 to 2019, in the class rep also. Yes, sir. What did you do? Sir, to be honest, it was... I basically, uh, like, uh, there, there was this freshers party, so I was always, for the civil engineering uh, department, I always had the chance of uh, being the manager of that freshers party for all the four batches that were there, like the 2015, 16, 17 and 18 batch. Leadership skills. Leadership skills. And sir, I also had the chance of uh, being a member of the Dean Academic Council. Student uh, Council was there and I was the member of that also. In one of the earlier questions, you were trying to link civil engineering with administrative reform. Right, sir. traffic traffic management ki baat ki. Koi bhi kuch karna chahiye apne. So how how is civil engineering related with this traffic management? What is what's in your opinion? How can we decongest the city? Sir, uh, in Sri Lanka. Koi apne maps ki baat ki. Yes, sir. Apne mm -hmm. map the crime, so project the crime. in final year as well. Mm -hmm. Yes, my project. Uh, it it <coughs> sound convincing. Please explain. Mm -hmm. I myself have a similar Very interesting. So, can I uh, like answer this question with the help of an example? Yeah, please. Because you specifically talked about Srinagar city, right? So, first, first track. Let's take one by one. Okay. Traffic, civil engineering, and you are the SSP traffic student. Go ahead. Okay. So, being posted as SSP traffic Srinagar, sir. There are these hot spots in the Srinagar city. First of all, I would uh, like have an hotspot identification of the city that I already did in my civil engineering project back in 2019 in the eighth semester of my college days. So there, uh, for example, I would give an example of a hotspot, it's Haiderpura Chok. So there was some dynamic officer back in 2020, I think, or 2021. We had a lot of jams in uh, uh, this Sanat Nagar area. So what he did was he introduced a barricade 
and the jam and what we do is like we go 500 meters along that road and we turn and the jam was like it, the problem was solved it was this easy but that man he was basically a civil engineer he had a civil engineering background so he had the some is there. right he is not there now he is not there now <laughs> so that i can't predict then if we have a traffic management system, we have a traffic lights for investing such a huge amount of all this. Yes, Instead sir. of using those lights, traffic yes, lights, signals. signals and all that, we are just making a cut somewhere in the road and making it traffic that it will be a smooth traffic. How do you explain this? Sir, it wasn't bad. Is it not the waste of the public exchange? Sir, it wasn't basically about making a cut. It was, there was uh, this uh, traffic came from four sides. So it was about reducing the number of vehicles that pass pass through that Sanatnagar Chok. So that his idea is just to make an underbridge or an overbridge and bypass all the kind of recurring yeah, costs. That, that, that infrastructure. That, uh -huh. Sir, that needs a lot of money. Uh -huh. We have this one in uh, Haidarpura Chok. Okay, please go ahead. Ask sir, ask sir, 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 it was it was identifying the hotspots of Srinagar city and the solutions thereof. Academic. Yeah, this, this is sort of academic. You do data collection. Data collection and also the analysis of so that. Tell it, can you, now, what else? How do you use track reforms? So this is the first point. And the second point being is that uh, being a civil engineer, you exactly know about the curves, the dimensions of the roads uh, and all these things. So you can definitely have a plan in your mind that from which route we can uh, throw the maximum traffic and from which route we can uh, divert the traffic. Like that's, that's really important. Being a civil engineer, you definitely would have an idea of traffic density of the city in your mind because you have already read that in your traffic engineering subject. You skipped one important issue. Sir. Introduction of urban transport, urban efficient transport. Right, sir. That's, that's a solution. Right, so that's me. also a solution. So, but being uh, SSP Srinagar, I would only be a stakeholder to that. I won't, it, it won't be at my discretion. I would be an important stakeholder. I think, like, I'm asking your opinion on this. You need to educate people about that. Right, sir. 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 Right, that is where the role of traffic management is traffic police comes in. Right, sir. If you have a safety bed, you penalize the offender. Right, sir. Then you have to penalize the offender. Right, sir. So enforcement is an issue. Yes, sir. Enforcement is an issue. Thank you, sir. So, Mr. Moin, your optional was provided. Right, sir. Who is known as the father of public administration when it comes to the discipline sir father of public administration is uh, sir, he was the us president uh, uh, sir we have uh, woodrow wilson he's called as the father. all right are you aware about the 14 points of woodrow wilson yes sir all right can you tell me what is the 14th point Sir, it basically, I cannot exactly tell you what was the 14th point, but what I would tell you is that Woodrow Wilson focused basically on three main things. In all those 14 points, there was this three main things. Sir, it was economy, efficiency, and uh, effectiveness. And basically those 14 points, sir, uh, it was uh, the Ratha, Galik and Arjun, they gave those 14 principles of administration, like the management. Brilliant, brilliant. The 14th point led to the formation of League of Nations. Right, sir. Right. All right. Asha, uh, you, are, Asha, you are aware about India's neighborhood and uh, what are the issues going on with it? Are you reading the newspaper on a regular basis? Yes, sir. I do try to cover our international affairs. All, right. All right. Asha, sometimes coming in the news, right, there is a lot of financial crisis going on in uh, Sri Lanka. Right, sir. Right. Are you aware about what led to the financial crisis in uh, Sri Lanka? So it was basically the a lot of loan they had, they, they had a lot of debt, so that's where they they crossed the limits. So that's why we we say that there should be a fiscal discipline in a country. For example, in India, we have the FRBM Act for that thing only. So uh, Sri Lanka crossed all the limits of debt. Like they had those uh, checks, they didn't apply uh, like over there, so they got out of the line. So that's how the country was bankrupt. All right, all right. 
अच्छा आर यू अवेयर अबाउट इंडियाज नेबरहुड ऑल दी कंट्रीज इफ यू क्लोज योर आईज कैन यू सी देम सर इफ आई इमेजिन देम यस आई कैन ऑल राइट ऑल राइट अच्छा स्टार्टिंग फ्रॉम चाइना आई वांट यू टू नेम ऑल दी नेबरिंग लिटरल बाउंड्रीज दी कंट्रीज ऑफ इंडिया इन ए क्लॉकवाइज फैशन स्टार्टिंग फ्रॉम चाइना सर वी हैव द चाइना सर वी हैव बांग्लादेश सर वी हैव म्यानमार एंड अदर कंट्रीज सर द आईलैंड नेशंस कैन आई लाइक नेम देम आल्सो आई सेड लिटरल बाउंड्री राइट नॉट मैरिटाइम बाउंड्री ओके द लिटरल वन सर वी हैव द बांग्लादेश एंड म्यानमार एंड वी आल्सो हैव पाकिस्तान इन दिस इफ वी कम लाइक क्लॉक वाइज टू पाकिस्तान इन द रन ऑफ इज अफगानिस्तान नेबरिंग टू और वी डू शेयर लैंड बाउंड्री sir uh, it was basically the erst wide state of jnk that shared the boundary with afghanistan so now we have ladakh sharing our boundary with afghanistan uh, sir uh, right now also sorry sir we do share our boundary with afghanistan all right it's uh, all right. china we don't share now okay now we share india question is india as nature right sir right sir acha right, mr moin can you name five rivers south of deccan okay so sir can i start with narmada itself uh, yes narmada and tapti they are not precisely south of deccan so deccan starts basically below narmada like everything below narmada it's deccan all right so sir i would include narmada as well so right. going on we have the godavari we have the krishna uh, we have the uh, we have the uh, sir kaveri and we have the uh, so there this penna river we have the largest gorge in south mm-hmm. india on this river mm-hmm. so these are very good very rivers. good wonderful wonderful acha do you know uh, right now about the semiconductor conundrum do you know what a semiconductor is exactly sir so semiconductor is basically uh, it's it's a uh, so silicon and germanium it's it's uh, it's a collaboration sort of i'm not getting the exact words for that sorry sir so uh, it's basically used in the electronic industry semiconductor can you name certain areas where uh, semiconductors are pivotal in the uh, manufacturing so geographically no no i'm saying that where are semiconductors used in a particular area application yes. part yes sir so in the in making the chips for in the cars also we use semiconductor chips sir in the mobile phones we have the semiconductor chips in the phones uh, in the laptops we have the intel core processor that also has semiconductor chips brilliant brilliant acha can you tell me what is the scope of uh, semiconductor and with regard to india right sir so india is trying to be the leader of global south like we are acting as a global uh, leader of global south so we have to be uh, like we have to be there uh, we have to lead in the electronic industry because that is the future we have the artificial intelligence we have the uh, so we have the other uh, big data and all these things that needs semiconductors so uh, the unfortunately the thing we have is that we uh, there's not that much of silicon and germanium that we found in india and we basically have to import it from china itself so we are dependent on our raw, mat- raw materials basically from china so that's where uh, that's the point that our government is also working upon we are tying up with some of the uh, latin american countries we are enhancing our relationships with them and even some of the african countries from where we could get the raw materials so that we could diversify our supply chain for the same for semiconductor industry we was i can even give you an example of some of the young uh, uh, entrepreneurs who have started industries for example we have this vedanta group so you would have heard about it so so this is one of the thriving semiconductor industries in india in the tata group recently had the collaboration with them to develop the semiconductors we have the pli scheme the Uh, that indian government is giving for semiconductor industry overall electronics we have the 17500 crore initiatives in the last year budget 2000 of 2021 budget efficiency and effectiveness what is the difference between the two terms sorry efficiency is we have a task in how much time we do that task that is the efficiency for example there is this interview if i am able to answer Eight out of ten questions. That's my efficiency. But the effectiveness is what's the quality of my answer. 
if I am able to answer those eight questions, but what was the quality of those eight? Uh, Should an administrator be efficient or effective? Sir, I think uh, 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 looking at the present uh, time uh, or, uh, uh, is a very, very important for an administrator. Okay. Can you name districts of North Kashmir? Right, sir. Sir, we have three districts of North Kashmir, uh, the administrative districts. So first of all, we have Paramula, so we have the Kupara, and we have the Pandipura. What is the difference between LOC and LAC? LOC is the line of control, and that goes with uh, Western Bounty, with the Pakistan itself, after the Shanghai. And then we have the LAC with the China, line of control as well. Okay, Mohini. You are doing fine, but थोड़ा सा आपको ये ना engineering की knowledge refresh करनी पड़ेगी। Because you are a civil engineer, तो आपको civil engineering के questions पूछे जा सकते हैं। वो because वो जब ये नहीं है। Or you you try to downplay your I think I don't know whether this is synthetic आपके experience ही। या public or not I don't want to comment on that, but try to downplay because you are not hands on on what you are doing. I mean, we, Wait, that is the. Be sincere. If you lead, if, if you lead the panel to public administration, you could be better uh -huh. than. If you don't towards. Ah, basic concept. Yeah, basic concept. 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 Or who will link her by your civil engineering background with the administration or police? Makes no sense. Makes no sense. You are a generalist at the university and it's your administrative skill. On a scale of 10 for smartness, where would you place yourself? It would be on 9.5. No, I won't do that. You are a smart guy. I will rate you 7 at present. Position in which you are at present. Listen, you have you are wearing a suit, but time you have to do two deficiencies of wearing a suit. You are a foreigner, but it has not been. You are not wearing a suit. You are not wearing a suit. You are not wearing a suit. These are the things. These are these are the basically. If you are wearing a suit, you should follow the basically dress code of the suit. Either one or the other, you should have kept it like this. This is quite smart, and you will be a very good police officer. Not only nine to five, that I'll give you. I'll give you ten. You will be a proper dress code and all that. Okay, you are good. Take care, brother.